Um, we are getting ready for Respect by Oscar Cabrera, and I'll ask the cast to join me. We're going to have a lovely uh, chat about it afterwards. Um, <clears throat> as soon as I get everybody in places, we will start. Uh, make sure everybody's mic is unmuted if it needs to be. I need one more actor, I think. I'm only seeing three actors, are you? How many actors do you see? Yeah, we don't have Sam here. Okay, uh, James, we need you to join. All right, stand by everyone, places. By Oscar Cabrera. game engine from scratch why would i dump money into a game that isn't even built yet michael sal because it will be run by the people who invest in the game instead of the company but isn't it a company that's building it yeah for those that are paid michael sound So, um, how much do we Venmo, Sam? Uh, we need twenty-three seventy from Mew Gray for the pizza and toilet paper, and we need fifteen ninety-eight from you, Sean, for the pizza, and we need seven twenty-three seventy for pizza, toilet paper, and rent from Michael. If he hasn't paid, it's the ninth. Oh, looking. No, not yet. I don't see a confirmation email. Me neither. Dude, I don't care if his dad is a guarantor or not. He can't be late again. He has it. He just forgets. No, he just plays. We should talk to him. Michael! What? We gotta talk. Yeah, I'm busy. Let's do it. Let's just do it. There's no other way he is going to listen. I mean, we're late if he doesn't pay by tomorrow. I don't know. That's a lot. We were just snowballing ideas. It's crazy, right? I'm in. We have to fight fire with fire. Feels more like we're playing with fire. No pressure, but... This doesn't work without you, Sam. We're all doing so good. Why tempted with this? It may be the only way to get through to our friend. I don't think he's going to listen any other way. Are you in? Yeah. All right, three, two, one. Are you kidding me? Do you get I don't know how far we were into that raid? You, you couldn't wait 30 minutes! You think these H3 opportunities grow on trees? You, you think the tier 12 items drop at normal drop rates? Yeah. What are you doing? You don't want to listen to us. You just want to play that game all day, every day. 
We are tired of it. We want our friend back. And if this is the only way that you'll listen to us, then so be it. <laughs> Dressing up in winter clothes? Cardboard? Um, enchanted armor by me, a Torin Resto Shaman. Reinforced by my leather working and tailoring. And weapon smithing by these orc hands. I'm sorry, this is really weird. Guys, this feels weird. Yeah, I'm heading the game, Sam, just like all the times. <sighs> Sam, what is this? The most important raid boss we've ever fought. <sighs> Ow. You don't want to return our texts. You ignore our conversations. You're dismissive. I have to get back to my game. Great, quick, sap him before he gets to his room. What has Sap ever worked in a raid? Like, like ever. <laughs> it's so pathetic. Like, you, you know the mechanics. Why, why would you even think that would work? Yeah. Yeah. Like, ah. yeah. Stop yeah. it. Yeah. Stop. Stop it. Yeah. Ah. Ah. I'm pulling too much aggro. Ah. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. Talk now. Sam, tell me you're going to tank. You're doing great, though. Oh. Hey, dummy, I need you to pay rent on time. I'm sick of this. You wait to the last moment and it looks bad on all of us. The rent is already high. Most of us can't afford another huge hike when we resign. Touch me again, and it's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> Bow before the unending flame! Um, Michael? Oh, oh, dominate mind! Uh, 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 what did I just get hit with? You uh, are with me. This was a gamer's house! It's a damage over time. Guilt. Uh, it's a hard hitter, but if you stay close, I can I can heal. It's not our fault we're playing a game you aren't. Ah! <sighs> I thought you would understand. I thought you were my friends. Cleared the first stage of battle. How many more do you think there are? No idea. This is our first run. Maybe we're getting through to them. <laughs> Uh, not uh, on of all your playing. Do you know what it was like? You all stopped. No more Thursday night raids. You, you can't just shift games on me like that. You know how hard it is for me to be so too. Oh. Do you know how hard it is to run a guild by yourself because your friends don't want to play? Don't want to play? We built a guild from the ground up. Over a hundred guildies recruited by us. Counting on us, creating a raid schedule, amending guild rules as new patches come out monthly. It's more than just playing. And you all just left. Oh, it was, it was just too much. I had to let go. Had? It's not a burden. Oh. It wasn't me. I'm not this orc warrior. Even now I feel so stupid. I'm the farthest thing from this in every possible way. So yes, I had to let it go. There are more important things. To you. Sam, don't get too far. This isn't your first rodeo. We don't even know how long this stage is. I'm sorry, Michael. We didn't mean to leave you. Remember when we were doing a mythic raid on the Lich King and we cleared the final stage and all of us got lifted in the air? Yeah, Sean screamed. Hey, I thought it was a new mechanic. We had never gotten that far. I thought we had white. <laughs> it was a cutscene. <laughs> yeah, good time. But we have real world responsibilities now. It couldn't last forever. I guess. Maybe just not playing all the time. 
Blanco 2580 misses you. Oh, I miss him. Well, well. So does Josh and Marsha. You were our leader. We want to see Blanco again. Michael. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm really trying. But I don't think I can do this. It's not. I'm not you. I've had to try to be over these past two months, but it's just been so hard to keep everyone together. We lost half the guild. I'm trying to recruit to recoup our losses. It's so hard to be living in the shadow of how great you were. Everyone wants Blanco 2580 back. Nobody wants me. How do you think that makes me feel? I can't. If you come back, together we can pull everyone back. We could do mythics again with, without having to spam looking for a group in general chat. Just pop in every once in a while. I'll do everything. Just be there for us. I can't. It's too much. There's just this, this idea everyone had of me that is just not true. And for the first time in a long time, I feel, I feel like I have time on my own. My own time. I just don't think it's a healthy hobby anymore. For me, I don't need it. You don't need it or us. Stay close, you're pushing it. Wait. I'm sorry. We did have a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, the best. But the hardest step is the one that starts a new journey. Yeah. You have to just blindly trust, if anything, that it will all be fine and that it will all work out, okay? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. You always knew just the right words to say. Oh, oh, oh disarmed. Why, Michael? I will blindly trust Sam. I will take this step to become the greatest guild on the server. I will pull everyone back, and I will take the very thought of you out of the minds of your ignorant followers. Uh. And I'm done with you. They won't so much as whisper your name in chat. I will burn your name from their lips. Bow before the unending flame! Oh, oh. 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 He's hitting so hard. Oh. Sam, do something! Oh. Oh. It's, it's too much. Even you both are like, oh. Sam! Oh! Uh, 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 uh. How does it feel? Finally, taste defeat. Any last words? It will save you. This isn't the end of this, Michael. There's no more, Michael. Witness. You were such a good leader. Now, witness my first steps. While. Oh. It wasn't your fault. The rusty. I'm not geared. I practice. That match. Oh, account notification. You okay. paid rent. <laughs> See it all back out. Yeah, no, I guess it did. Hmm. Sam? 
Sam, you're awfully quiet. This means war. End of play. All right. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Um, I'm going to ask uh, our playwright, Oscar Cabrera, to join us as well. Hey, hey Oscar. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was super fun. Um, I'm Dewey Scott Wiley. I'm the director of the show, and Oscar is the playwright. And we have been workshopping this for a little while. Um, we worked on this a little bit in April and Oscar did some rewrites and then we came back to revisit it here in July. Um, so what has this process been like for you, Oscar, to uh, refine this show uh, with these actors? Well, I mean, the really great thing is that in, in terms of a draft coming in, there was already a pretty clear idea of what uh, what what the the A plot would be. But having like this talented cast of actors come in and really give valuable input, we were able to really clarify each one of the character's perspectives, um, uh, which I mean, <laughs> as you saw with the, with the play, gave these chances for these really great physical characters in a digital space. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, how many of you are STE company members? Yeah, uh, Adam too. Yeah, Adam too. Yeah. Um, and how many of you are uh, on the spectrum? Show of hands. Nice. So, um, what do you think those voices added to the script, Oscar? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, like, oh yes. Um, yeah, like having these actors play these roles. What what did that bring to the script that that maybe was different from what you originally intended or how did it help shape it? Because I think it definitely helped shape it, right? Well, as we all like adjust to this post COVID life, there <laughs> are a lot of ways where a lot of us feel that we are living in these little boxes, both <laughs> metaphysically and physically with Zoom. Um, so having uh, very specific voices, um, when we're confronting a lot of aspects of, of this play, when it deals with addiction to video games or just the feeling of anxiety, um, was able to just reinforce a lot of a lot of the themes that I wanted to explore with the piece, anyways. So just to have so many voices in the room that could really help add to that conversation, obviously, just made the piece stronger and, and better. Yeah, and uh, what I loved is all the conversations about gaming that ensued <laughs> as a result of the rehearsals, right? Yeah. Um, do any of the actors want to talk about that a little bit of how you were able to identify with this, this show? Um, well, I, I uh, was a longtime World of Warcraft player for uh, about 10 years. I, I had to unsubscribe right before Battle for Azeroth due to financial situations that have not improved but eventually I'll, I'll go back um, but I've also played you know many other kinds of games not just other MMOs but also you know many other kinds of different kinds of games and I've always been a proponent that uh, that game I, I hope I'm using that word correctly that games are art or they can be art just as much as uh, cinema or television or theater. Theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's role playing involved, certainly, right? So yeah. there's some similarities there. Um, it, it, it was nice to be able to combine multiple, like we just kind of nerded out and talked about video games. Yeah. yeah. But, but also talking about the balance of like, these are all uh, young men who just got out of college, you know, kind of finding themselves and finding that balance in adulthood, which I think whether you're neurotypical or not can be um, challenging and talking about the nature of addiction. If, you know, some, if someone's playing a lot of video games, but that's where they have their social life and that's where they like really 
diffuse and are able to deal with anxiety. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is that um, working on having an, a balance of you have to pay your rent on time, obviously, and have you know, manage your responsibilities. Um, and I think that's something that everyone can uh, in some way relate to, whether uh, they have, a, a, you know, video games they, they like to do or, you know, ranging from uh, just uh, intense interests to like drugs and alcohol. Like we all try to find a balance in adulthood. And I think that is also like a deeper story in this in this play. And the part we got to work on is is, you know, I, I like to me also, it's like it's a story about friendship and how you shouldn't try to manage this all alone and the lengths that we'll go to our, with our friends, even when it's like at, at odds, you know, I love that it ends with Sam saying like, I'll save you, Michael, even though it means war. Uh, <laughs> right. And, and so I think that is uh, that I would equate to a lot of my friendships is that, you know, this means war because I love you. <laughs> so, so my, my thinking uh, to be back off of Teddy um, is that, um, I mean, if you, I mean, obviously we have this version that we've had, and as Dewey said, and Oscar Rose said, we had, had an earlier script and we kind of edited it a little bit. Now, our first script, you know, several of us thought that it was a little more negative towards Michael. And I mean, really, th this modern, this, this, the version we just presented is, is going a little more for a middle ground that both sides have right parts and both sides have wrong parts. And as Teddy said, I mean, we, the, the balance is what is the proper way to look at it. We don't want to just divorce ourselves from the game, but we don't want to totally immerse ourselves in it to the exclusion of reality either. We want to find a balance. Right. I'd still that, that in the end. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think that's what's, what's great about this process is that, um, you know, I think at the first read, you could easily vilify Michael's character. Um, yeah. But uh, I think that there's a lot of compassion for Michael. Uh, in this play and a lot of compassion for friends who maybe are doing something a little too much and aren't really good at balance in their lives. And I, I think Teddy's right. It's definitely a universal message, right? Awesome. And Oscar, you're developing this into a longer piece? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I mean, you know, the thing that I always wanted to explore with it, like what people were talking about is that, you know, there is a really easy way of vilifying Michael. Um, but you know, for a lot of people, when you were listening to the conversation earlier and, and they were talking about performing uh, an expressive art, a lot of that, that a new emerging technology is going to be in video games, VR, even now with like, you know, semi-augmented reality using iPads and apps like uh, Tippy Talk to help uh, people that are maybe nonverbal on the spectrum communicate more effectively, people like my brother. And so that kind of exploration of technology you know, as we rush into augmented reality is something that fascinates me. And right now, I think that there are a lot of very valid, uh, um, uh, very, very valid properties to video games and the fantastical worlds that they create because it helps with rules. It helps with understanding your world. Um, and, and, you know, how can you fault someone if that's a little bit more comfortable than, you know, uh, some of the worlds that we live in? Um, so I think it's a fascinating topic and definitely something that's worth uh, exploring as a full length. Great. We look forward to that for sure. This has been a lot <laughs> of fun to work on. Um, uh, we've got another panel coming up at 6.15, so we're, we're all going to take off. But uh, I, if you are enjoying the programming so far, we've got lots more coming up tonight uh, as well we as... we more days to come too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Um, please go to the Spectrum Theater Ensemble Facebook page and uh, chip in with a donation if you can. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we're so glad to be having a virtual festival. Thanks, Thanks watching, everybody. Everyone. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Stay healthy and stay tuned. <laughs>